Old School Lane Casual Chats is brought to you by OldSchoolLane.blogspot.com and is associated with Manic Expression, the Comic Book Cast, the Reopen Nickelodeon Studios in Orlando, Florida Facebook page, and for entertainment's sake. <laughs> everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of Casual Chats. I am Patricia and I'm here with two very special guests. They do a podcast on SoundCloud called You Scared of This. I'm here with Eli and David, so welcome to Casual Chats. Thank you for having us. Glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, hi. Thanks for, thanks for having us. This is sort of a big deal for us. We've never been uh, interviewed before for any reason, so... <laughs> Yeah. You were the first. Well, usually what I like to do for not just um, my viewing audience, who also love Nickelodeon stuff, but just so I can be able to, you know, spread, you know, people who deserve to be more recognized with um, all their wonderful work. Oh, shucks. Yeah, we appreciate it. We, uh, we've, over the course of the last year now, we've become uh, sort of ingrained in, in the internet Nickelodeon nostalgia culture. So uh, we're excited to be connecting with another show. It's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. So um, first question is, um, when, what are your earliest Nickelodeon memories? I mean, I grew up in Nickelodeon. I grew up in a house that always had cable. Nickelodeon was a constant presence in my house from the time I was born until the time I moved out when I was 23. Uh, my earliest memories would probably be when Nickelodeon w- started hyping the first three Nicktoons. I just I distinctly remember seeing the uh, the promotions for those and how they were treating it like a huge deal. And shortly after that, I remember when they started hyping up SNCC. Uh, and I remember being really deeply uh, engrossed in all of the early Nickelodeon, like all of Nickelodeon's original content. All of those shows kind of became like my favorite things to watch on any network. Uh, and I stuck with Nickelodeon pretty steadfastly all throughout elementary school, middle school, and into high school. I don't actually, I have a terrible, terrible memory, which actually comes up on our show from time to time, especially when we were talking about those first few episodes that we started watching together. I have really vague recollections of of TV shows that I watched as a kid. We went for a period of time without Nickelodeon, but it was on at my grandmother's house, and I would watch it at friends' houses, like, right when it first started. So I don't know when I started watching it, but the earliest things that I do remember are watching uh, Rin and Stimpy with my dad, I think. I, I think I remember being really young when I when I first started doing that. So that has to be one of the earliest. But uh, I'm sure there must have been something before that. Wow, that's kind of surprising, considering that usually around that time, parents wouldn't be approval for watching Red and Stimpy with their kids. I mean, even with their kids watching it by themselves. So that's good on you for your dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me, let me go on record as saying that, like, that was par for the course for us. My earliest mem- TV memories are probably, like, watching Ren and Stimpy and Married with Children. <laughs> so, My parents were also pretty lax about having me watch Ren and Stimpy. I remember watching it with my dad. And um, I went back and watched Ren and Stimpy recently, and it blows my mind that it was on Nickelodeon at all at the time and that I was allowed to watch it when I was five. <laughs> because it is kind of fucked up now. It is pretty much, yeah. Can we say, right. can we say fuck? Sure, you can say whatever. It's it's called casual chats for a reason. <laughs> oh, we, thank God. We swear a lot on our show, but of course, like that's not necessarily something that all Nickelodeon audiences are looking for. So it's probably good that we checked. Don't worry about it. You're perfectly fine. Anyway, so um, going into that, what made you decide to start in a podcast discussing about out of all things? Are you afraid of the dark? Dykus and I have been best friends since high school, and very early on we started working on creative projects together. And uh, when he moved to Nashville and I moved to Austin, Texas, um, we were trying to find a way to continue doing projects and work on things. And we wanted to do a podcast because it seemed uh, really fun and easy. We we, We talked on the internet, we would call each other maybe once a month or something and just like chat about pop culture. So we said, hey, let's record our phone conversations when we're talking about movies and stuff and see if we can make a podcast. And none of it really fit. We couldn't find a good theme for it, you know? Uh, We would talk about a video game one week, and we would talk about a movie the next week. Um, 
And so we never really settled on any idea. And finally I said, listen, we just need to pick something and do it. And it was last October that uh, that we decided we're going to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? We're going to review at least like one episode a week for the month of October just so that we have a thing out of the way. And then we ended up uh, continuing with it from there for a whole year now. Something worth mentioning is that when Eli pitched the podcast to me uh, a year ago, he and I had both been listening to It's a Duck Blur really heavily. Yeah. Uh, not sure if your listeners are familiar with it. It's a DuckTales-themed podcast uh, where the hosts review ep- every episode of Disney's DuckTales, and it's hilarious. It's a great show. We were really into that, so we kind of borrowed their format for our show. Yeah, we owe we owe almost everything to them. I'll definitely give a little blurb about it in the description box below for anybody who's interested in checking it out. Yeah, duck blurb. <laughs> that was terrible. So, um, what were your expectations even before starting the podcast when rewatching the episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I wasn't really sure what to expect. I watched Are You Afraid of the Dark a lot as a kid. Uh, but it was not a show I had thought about in a long, long time. I was expecting it to be cheesy, I guess. I was really hoping to see a lot of very 90s fashion, a lot of 90s music, a lot of sort of kitsch from, like, my childhood. Uh, the show is definitely delivered on that front. I wasn't expecting much in the way of drama or character or anything. Yeah, and like I said, uh, I have terrible memory. And so when we went into this, my my most recent memories of Are You Afraid of the Dark were from watching it with my niece a year before we started the podcast. And we watched some episodes that I didn't think were very good. Uh, and then before that, actually, in late high school or early college, so about 10 years ago now, uh, we actually watched a, I watched a VHS of it over at David's house with a bunch of friends at a party. Uh, yeah. Someone had brought it. They bought it at like a... Uh, like a, a Goodwill or a secondhand store of some kind, and we watched a VHS, and that wasn't very good either. So in the past, you know, 10 years, I'd had nothing but uh, bad experiences with Are You Afraid of the Dark? And so I went into this assuming we were just going to be making fun of the show for a month. And a year later, we actually have a lot of episodes that we really love, and I think we've both gotten into it uh, quite a lot. Definitely. Yeah, I guess that on the surface, Are You Afraid of the Dark does seem like a product of its time. But because uh, DJ McHale wanted to treat his audience very seriously with its stories, then I think that's why people still resonate with Are You Afraid of the Dark. I mean, in a time in which you had stuff like Tales from the Crypt and then later on we had Goosebumps, there was such a niche of horror that really generated with a lot of kids during the 90s. And with seeing something like that, it really left a lasting impact on people. It's like, you know, something that was scary, something that was chilling, and something that was unexpectedly scary. You just kind of, it just kind of sticks into your brain. I mean, you know, sure, on the surface, the acting is terrible, and the effects are not as good compared to today's standards. And, um, yeah, you're right, the whole kitschiness of the 90s is kind of cheesy. But, you know, underneath a lot of that, I mean, there's still a core of it that still holds up in a lot of ways oh yeah and i think you're absolutely right on a on a lot of different things there that that was a really weird time in pop popular culture like you said there was there was goosebumps there was are you afraid of the dark uh tales from the crypt and then also x files was huge and i remember fox was really into like sort of horror sci-fi stuff at the time so there was all sorts of pop culture horror stuff happening on television and uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark was definitely a gateway drug into that for kids. And so even though as an adult, when I'd gone back and watched it, I hadn't thought it was very good, you know, even then I knew that it was something that had been really great when I was a kid. I knew it was a gateway into scarier stuff for me. Um, and I always appreciated it for that. And now going back and watching it, you know, now that I've seen a, a, a larger body of the episodes, uh there are plenty where the, the effects are well done. There are plenty where the acting is good. You just, you know, sometimes the, the goofier parts stick out in your memory. Watching the show and uh, talking to DJ McHale, uh, as we did earlier this year, uh, has sort of given me a new appreciation for that kind of show. The fact that uh, Nickelodeon had the, the balls to make a children's horror show in the early 90s when there was, at the time, not a lot of precedent for that. Uh, the fact that those kinds of shows don't even exist now has given me sort of a new appreciation for for Are You Afraid of the Dark as a like on a conceptual level because like it's I'm sure that was a big risk for them to take to do a scary show that was maybe not really palatable to parents, uh, but 
seeing something scary as a kid, it's going to stick with you for a long time. And I think that's part of the enduring appeal of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, I mean, even still to this day, Are You Afraid of the Dark is considered to be like one of the quintessential shows of the 90s. And when it came to SNCC, it was like a major staple of SNCC, the kind of show that you would watch every Saturday night, you know, right before. Uh, I believe Are You Afraid of the Dark aired right after Clarissa and... I believe either Ren and Stimpy or Roundhouse, but for the most part, Are You Afraid of the Dark was like a major staple until years later when it was when there were other shows that came along like All That and Keenan and Kel. It but, closed out SNCC for the longest time. I think it was the the final show in the four show block, which as a kid like sort of frightened me. That that <laughs> itself sort of frightened me that like this show is so bad atle- badass and ruthless that they're putting it at the very in- like this is the latest a Nickelodeon show could possibly air. Yeah, as the Nickelodeon thirty at night. As though Nickelodeon was like pushing it into the corner to protect the the del- most delicate children from it. Yeah, for the most part. And you know, even for a lot of people when you know, when SNCC was at its final years, a lot of people felt that even though that two thousand four was the year that SNCC was officially finished the year 2000 was when SNCC died for a lot of people because shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark and Keenan and Kel and all that were pretty much finished. And no other show could replace it. So, I mean, not only for Are You Afraid of the Dark was it a staple for Nickelodeon, but it was also a staple for SNCC as well. Definitely. Are, Are You Afraid of the Dark did a really good job at SNCC's mission. DJ McHale talked to us about how... Um, Nickelodeon wanted to be real and they wanted to be honest, maybe in a way that the Disney Channel wasn't. Uh, He talked about how Nickelodeon was very serious about not having squeaky clean kids and not having like squeaky clean premises to their shows. And, you know, shows like Ren and Stimpy and Clarissa were very, very real about what the show, what the creators thought was funny or what they thought was true. Um, and Are You Afraid of the Dark was a show that was very brave about what it thought kids could handle and what it thought kids wanted. And it, I really think it upheld that integrity and sort of sent the message of what SNCC was, which is impressive. It's like, it's crazy. I'd be curious to learn more about what the culture was like uh, at Nickelodeon and kind of at large in 2000, because I think around that time, a lot of those similar shows were kind of going the way of the buffalo. Uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark ended, uh, Goosebumps had ended, Tales from the Crypt had, I think, long since ended. So I wonder if there was something more to it there that, like, the the general public was getting tired of that kind of show, or maybe it just wasn't. It, maybe they were just burnt out on it. Uh, I don't know, listeners. If you have any ideas, I'd be interested to hear them. Well, I have a bit of a hypothesis. I Ooh. believe that it was the latter. I believe it was completely burned out because. You know, for a lot of people's opinion, and myself included, because me and my best friend, Kevin, have been massive Goosebumps fans for the longest time when we read the books. Um, Not so much the TV series, but we were huge fans of the books. But the later Goosebumps books weren't as interesting, especially when going over to Goosebumps 2000, we felt that the ideas were becoming a little bit more stale. (laughs) And um, As was often the case when uh, any sort of intellectual property had the number 2000 attached to the end of it <laughs> yeah uh yeah Always back then when the year 2000 was considered to be futuristic yeah. remember that kids <laughs> we'll be driving flying cars and living on the moon <laughs> and al gore will be president <laughs> Yeah, it only just took a, uh, it only finally just took until a few months ago that we're finally getting laceless sneakers. Yeah, and now at, at yeah, the time of finally the, the Cubs <laughs> are getting into the World Series. So back to the future two reference. Yeah, I think that you're right about it. It kind of getting stale. Another thing, I, I keep going back to our interview with DJ. He was a goldmine of information for us. Um, he talked about how, and this is a, a kind of cynical and depressing thing. Uh, he talked about how the networks were realizing that they could just get away with making cheaper shows uh, as comedies. And he, he talked about how all of the networks were moving away from serious shows for kids. Um, you know, in the 90s, you had Are You Afraid of the Dark? Uh, you had on Disney Channel Flash Forward, things like Boy Meets World, where it was, you know, a comedy, but they dealt with serious issues and there was, like, continuity. And he said that uh, they were moving more in the direction of comedies. And and you look at the success that the Disney Channel had with stuff like uh, uh, whatever Hilary Duff's show was, I couldn't even tell you. And um, Uh, Are you talking about Lizzie McGuire? Lizzie McGuire. I said 
I said Hannah Montana. Lizzie, Ma- Lizzie McGuire, Hannah Montana, uh, you know, shows that were more of comedies. And then Disney got into much more slapstick fare even than that with like this sweet life and all of those. Um, so it was just a, I think aside from it being a cultural move for, where people were getting burnt out on lazy rehashes of ideas through horror series, I think they would were also, uh, there was a corporate side of it where they were realizing that they didn't have to take the production value as seriously when they were doing a comedy, and that meant that they could be a little cheaper about it, which is the cynical take on it. But um, I thought that was an interesting idea. Well, I think another thing, too, was that another series of books were becoming a lot more popular around the late 90s when the horror genre was starting to become a little bit more stale. You had the Animorphs books and you had the Harry Potter books. Never heard of them. So that kind of um, (laughs) genre started to become a lot more popular. And then around the 2000s, there was like a fight to which would be the best fantasy genre, Lord of the Rings, (laughs) Harry Potter, or Chronicles of Narnia. I thought you were going to say Harry Potter or Animorphs. <laughs> when is that getting a reboot, by the way? I'm just imagining, like, the alternate future where Animorphs is bigger than Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, you remember that old Nickelodeon show from the 90s about when they try to do an adaptation of Animorphs? I was so against Animorphs for some reason, and I cannot tell you why, but as a kid, I was so against Animorphs that I refused to even watch the TV show. I think I read one of the books and was like, this is trash, and I don't, I, like, I have no idea why I thought that. I remember seeing commercials for Animorphs and being so put off by the terrible computer animation uh, in the commercials that I didn't even give it a chance. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be our next show, Dyke. Is I'll make you watch all of Animorphs, and we'll do a podcast. Oh about man! That. Oh <laughs> wow! If you are going to watch every single episode of Animorphs, then I highly recommend that you probably invite my good buddy Joshikin's romantic expression, maybe as a guest in one episode, because she's a huge Animorphs fan. And <laughs> they, the, they can the take TV my place. show is terrible. <laughs> That's going to be our next summer break. Uh, in between yeah. seasons, I have a new tradition on our on our podcast now where. Uh, we take what's called summer break and watch uh, a different thing, and that's I'm gonna I'm gonna find the scariest episodes of Animorphs for you, Dykus. Oh God! How many episodes were there? Like ten? <laughs> there were only a handful of episodes. It only ran for like um, two seasons, but oh, that's the too, rest too of the seasons, di- the rest of the episodes didn't even air in the U.S. They only aired in Canada because nobody was watching them. <laughs> oh, that's that is the worst thing that can happen to a Nick show. <laughs> I mean, you know, pretty much. I mean, you know, very few Nickelodeon shows were canceled, like, at least during the, the half of either the first season or season two. I mean, the same thing happened for, like, Space Cases and My Family's Got Guts. No One Knows Best didn't even air all of its episodes, and it hasn't even aired ever since. Just, my God. I mean, there's so many Nickelodeon shows that pretty much were, like, swept under the rug, and nobody talks about them, with the exception of maybe, like, hardcore Nick fans. I will say that Animorphs, if it did anything for us, it gave us a really wonderful like uh, template for memes on the internet where you you know take a picture of any random thing and have it morph into any other random thing on a fake Animorphs book cover. Those are always good. I like the one of uh, Adam Driver turning into that weird cat. Did you guys see that one? I'll always love the one of Kanye West morphing into another picture of Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if I have nothing... like I'm pretty sure if you just search for Animorphs, if you Google image search it, 50% of the images are fake covers, and they're they're just memes. So, you know. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the Wild Thornberries, in which the only thing you can find on the Wild Thornberries are memes of, <laughs> of Nigel, Nigel Thornberry. <laughs> yeah. 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 If these pieces of popular culture have given us nothing else, they've given us good memes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, so, continuing with Are You Afraid of the Dark yeah. at this point. Um, <laughs> I've what were we talking about again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyway, I've interviewed DJ McHale a couple of times over the years, and one of the things that he talked to me about was the Are You Afraid of the Dark movie that never came out. And uh, it was a very interesting idea in which it was supposed to be about the boogeyman, and he was supposed to scare people, and Nickelodeon didn't want him to do it because it was too it was deemed too scary for kids, and they wanted him to change it into a much more lighthearted movie like Goosebumps and Abbott and Casella me Frankenstein. So, yeah. <laughs> Who is this Nickelodeon me? executive like a hundred years old? <laughs> Make it more like that Abbott and, Frank- Abbott and Castellami Frankenstein picture. That's what the kids ain't do. <laughs> the kids don't want the spooks these days. <laughs> 
What do you think? Would you have liked to have seen an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie uh, back in the day? That's such an interesting like thought. I I didn't even know that that was a thing. So I'm glad that he 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 withheld that information from us. Um, I guess we didn't ask about it, but he withheld that information from us. So I'm glad that you that you know that bit of trivia. Um, we talked to him about wanting a reboot of the show or wanting a movie of it now, and I would love to see. Uh, if you know, if he has any script sitting around, I wish I wish that like Netflix or someone would pay to have it turned into a movie right now. So yeah, I'm I'm on, I'm totally on board. Yeah, I mean, there's not really a lot of information about this movie. I only know of three things. One is that it was the the main bat, the main monster was going to be the boogeyman. Two, Mister Sardo was going to be in it, and three, it would have been released around ninety eight, and the main cast of the Midnight Society would have been from the revival era, not from the original. Hmm. We haven't gotten that far yet uh, in our rewatch. Now I'm, I'm I remember the uh, the second series or whatever the the second cast of the Midnight Society was vaguely. Um, it, the my only problem is that when I think about the Boogeyman, I think about the uh, the Boogeyman from the Ghostbusters cartoon, which is he he had an enormous blue head and he sort of looked like a really bad drawing of uh, of Dracula, and so that's what I'm assuming it would look like in this show too. I'm I've got to look this up now. It's pretty wonderful. Uh, and I think that that is exactly, that is perfectly on par with something that would have been in Are You Afraid of the Dark is a really bad boogeyman with like a giant fake prosthetic, almost a mascot size head. Actually, now that I think about it, I would be cool with that movie either way, done really badly in the style of a bad episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark so that I could have a lot of fun with it or rebooted by Netflix today and I get a really good scare the shit out of me movie. I mean, I, I guess if we were to it. keep to the original style of Are You Afraid of the Dark, maybe some people would be kind of insulted by it because it would have been kind of like the same way as how Goosebumps did their movie, in which, I mean, I, to be fair, I've never seen the Goosebumps movie, but the only thing I've heard about it from people was that it basically just satirized the 90s because it came out in the 90s. Ha, ha, ha. My biggest complaint about the Goosebumps movie, because I actually caught some, I caught about half of it, and it was boring, so I quit watching it. Uh, but my two biggest complaints with that were... Um, and this is probably what would end up happening if they if they made an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie, sadly. Uh, really bad CGI. Like, cartoonish Scooby-Doo on Monster Island CGI. And it was more of an adventure movie than a horror movie. More like the last half of The Mummy than the first half of The Mummy, if I can... Which, in my opinion, Goosebumps should have been more first half of The Mummy. For the record, just my two cents... Uh, I would like to see an anthology Are You Afraid of the Dark movie where it's four really well-produced Are You Afraid of the Dark Tales, period. That's a really interesting one about, you know, taking like four chunks, uh, four anthology stories into an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie. Now, you know, similar to like the Twilight Zone movie in which four different directors got a hold of, uh, got a, got to be a part of it, which four directors of today would you like to see do that? Oh, oh, holy shit. Eli, you go first. Oh man, I thought I thought I was gonna say what four are you afraid of the dark directors? And I was like, can I name four? There's like DJ, David Winning, Ron Oliver, and and then I drew a, a blank. Uh, I mean, you know, DJ could be a part of it, sure. Yeah, bring it, bring the man back. Um, if I were to see four are you afraid of the dark stories told as modern movies, I would want to see just because he deserves it. Tim Burton do one. Uh, don't let him write it. Let him direct it. Actually, yeah, this, that's true for both of them. Tim Burton, M. Night Shyamalan. Um, oh, what's the guy that... Uh, I'm drawing a blank. I just watched a movie that I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I say really enjoyed. Um, it wasn't actually that. It wasn't great, but the director was good. Oh, this is going to kill me. Mike Flanagan. Uh, I would say Mike Flanagan, M. Night Shyamalan, Tim Burton, and I can't think of a fourth and i'm pretty embarrassed an edgar wright are you afraid of the dark episode might be interesting that would be I was, good i've never been the biggest fan of edgar wright but i feel like he would do something clever with it yeah i actually i i'm throwing my weight behind that one as well make it happen that and whoever directed shin gojira which was nuts i want to see them do are you afraid of the dark a japanese are you afraid of the dark episode would be good 
Ooh, that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Sort of like how The Ring was, in which it introduces like a Japanese monster to American audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Let someone from a totally different culture try to do like a 22-minute anthology horror short. It, See that, what happens. That's the perfect episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Is like the kids are sitting around the campfire. One of them brings in a new person to the Midnight Society to try out like telling a story. And the kid is a Japanese exchange student who tells the scariest fucking story in the world. And none of the kids ever come back because that would that would be accurate. That would be pretty interesting. <laughs> Japanese horror, way scarier. I, in my opinion, that would be hilarious to me. Okay, now I mean, with us speaking about like adaptations and reboots with everything that's been going on nowadays. I mean, you know, especially with the Splat, they've been redoing or uh, they've been reviving Nickelodeon shows as TV movies. Now, um, how would you like to see Are You Afraid of the Dark come back? Would you like to see it come back as a miniseries or as a TV movie? Hmm. Basically, like, with a miniseries, it's like, you know, kind of like a reboot miniseries. And, you know, with, um, you know, the TV movies that um, Nickelodeon has done so far, it's basically a mixture between, like, the old cast and the new cast. Like a passing of the torch kind of thing. If they were to bring it back in any sort of, like, short term with any sort of short term commitment like a movie or a mini series i don't know i i would favor i guess a mini series which I, I feel like that's maybe what the show is already better suited for is like the the shorter episode format whichever would allow the show to like a a bigger and better budget i guess but like a five episode revival might be fun i i mean i would love to see both if you did a movie you're going to get one story told like incredibly well but the problem is, it's not going to be the same kind of story that you would get on Are You Afraid of the Dark, right? It's got to be padded out, it's got to be longer, it's got to be more elaborate. And that would definitely be an interesting thing to see. But if you do a mini series where you say you've got five episodes, and each of those episodes is just going to be the best episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark that it can possibly be, that to me seems a lot more exciting. Uh, like following the original format, but with a better budget, and more time taken on each individual story. I think that's exciting. Yeah, the closest thing that Are You Afraid of the Dark ever got to a movie was the three-parter called The Tale of the Silver Sight. Yeah. So you guys haven't seen it yet because this is from the revival era, so um, it's actually a really, really interesting take on an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. I won't go into ma major spoilers, so um, when you get to that, then that'll be a really interesting thing for you guys to see because that's basically like the best equivalent of an Are You Afraid of the Dark movie that we've ever gotten. Yeah, I spoiled that one for myself uh, a little bit. I haven't watched the whole thing because I, I ended up getting really interested in it as I was spoiling it, and I said, no, I've got to save the rest of this for myself. So uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Silver Sight, assuming the sun doesn't consume the earth or something between now and then. <laughs> well, um, for the record, it's like one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. I'm trying to figure out what season that is. Is that six? I think seven. it's the beginning of season. Ooh, six six, I think it's the beginning of season six. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, so um, I've actually did a list a long, long time ago uh, where I discussed about the Nickelodeon shows that I would love to see being remade, and I mentioned Are You Afraid of the Dark? I think I mentioned one of the things that I felt was like really problematic with the series is like, you know, as much as the Midnight Society are a really iconic group they pretty much have like little to no personality. And one of the things that I really loved about Tale of the Silver Side was that you actually get to see them interact with everything that's been going around them. Sort of like Erie, Indiana, in which there's like strange things happening in a small town. It would have been really cool if maybe the characters were more interactive with all the scary things that have been going around them. Like, how do they come up with the scary stories and... Um, you know, did and and basically just know a little bit more about the characters, like where they go to school and um, how their normal lives are, and them preparing the stories. I mean, just something a little bit more to flesh out the characters more. And another thing is, is that um, I think in you know this day and age in which you know we look back on Are You Afraid of the Dark with irony because a lot of the stuff is pretty outdated for pretty much for every reason, whether it be acting or. The, the monsters not being as scary as much. I think it does need a, a bit of a retool with how scary it can be for kids. Like, you know, the kids of today are not the same as, you know, the kids of 25 years ago. I mean, there's a lot more scary things that are out on TV and movies nowadays that I think it could have a, 
bit of a bigger presentation. But for the most part, I think the stories um, could be a little bit um, more retooled as well, bringing in a little bit more thrills and fears. But I think that Are You Afraid of the Dark could work in this day and age, in a time in which we have Stranger Things and The Walking Dead and... um, you know, all those kind of things, uh, you know, with horror movies, apparently for some people are getting a lot of people more excited. So I think maybe, you know, something for something for kids especially, you know, they don't have anything that are horror related with the exception of maybe a few Goosebumps specials that air on um, what is now, you know, Kids Discovery or something like that, what formerly was The Hub. Yeah, I think that with Are You Afraid of the Dark, I would like to see maybe a reboot come back in that kind of way. How do you imagine a reboot of Are You Afraid of the Dark would look like? Hmm. I have to assume that a reboot of Are You Afraid of the Dark, uh, you know, when I when I think about the episodes that we've watched so far in the first season, so many of them dealt with what the adults saw as, like, uh, the technologies of the time that the kids were invested in. There's an episode, uh, the tale of the phone police about the phone. And there's a tale, there's the tale of the pinball wizard about playing video games. Although it's really about pinball. I think it would be a lot of that happening. There would be so many stories. It would be like black mirror for kids, right? It would be so many stories about scary things happening because of the internet. And, scary things happening because you've gotten someone's uber which is actually quite terrifying if like if you're a kid don't don't go get in a random ass uber just based on how the show was structured back then and how so much of it was about what the, what the perceived sort of interests of the kids were it would have to be the same thing today there would be episodes about youtube and and uh, social networking i'm sure yeah just imagine a game about like a creepy pasta or slender man or something <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there would be a there would be a, a a knockoff Slender Man. There would be a rip off of Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, actually, those are both incredibly scary things. Kids are ready for this stuff. Oh yeah, I didn't really, I didn't even consider Five Nights at Freddy's. But to be fair, I've never even played any of the games. I just see like you know clips here and there, or artwork. Yeah, Same here. reaction videos, that sort of stuff. Yeah, but like that's you know, I talked. You mentioned Tales from the Crypt and and. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Shoot, Tales from the Crypt and Goosebumps, Goosebumps happening at the same time as Are You Afraid of the Dark? You know, right now, like like we said, there's creepy pasta happening on the internet, and there's Five Nights at Freddy's. Kids like to post reaction videos to scary things. Uh, my niece is only like eight years old, and she loved Stranger Things, and I she that's like me watching the shows that I did as a kid. She she was probably too young to watch Stranger Things, but she loved it. There's so much interest in kids for that stuff um when rl stein came to to austin a year ago maybe yeah a year or two ago you know he talked about how kids wanted to be scared and how kids liked that sort of stuff um and i don't think that ever quits being true so a a reboot of the show would be awesome and it would i'm sure be about those things that the kids are interested in the kids and i wonder if it would be about a group of kids going and gathering around a campfire or it would be like an online group or something. I mean, that that makes me feel like an old man, an old out of touch man speculating on that kind of stuff. But I wonder if there are different ways you could organize the group of kids to get together and share these stories. I would love it if they did still gather around a campfire, because even though it seems like a weird thing for kids to do now, it was probably a weird thing for kids to do then. Yeah, I mean, you know, what kind of parent would allow their kids to go out in the middle of the night into an undisclosed location and they have no idea where they're at? Regularly. My friends my friends are going to put a bag over my head and lead me out to a fire in the middle of nowhere <laughs> to yeah. perform this arcane ritual of telling the scary story for their approval. You're getting, like, a bunch of young teenagers together once a week, probably, to play with fire unsupervised in the woods. Statistically, it's startling that none of those kids are dead right now. <laughs> like, every time they went out there to tell a story, the the statistical odds of them burning down the forest jumped. Like, every time they went back to that, it was just another, like, another statistical nightmare. I can, I can definitely see that. I mean, in this day and age in which... Everything is so PC and everybody's being overprotected about everything that's been going on because you could get kidnapped or something. Then, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe somebody who ever remade Are You Afraid of the Dark would probably, you know, talk about, like, 
you know, doing this stuff kind of online, like meeting up in like a chat group on Skype or something, and then they just post something, and then it will be read out loud or something, or maybe like a YouTube clip or something like that. Yeah, and I didn't think about like it's you know when I was a kid, I would I would go out at nights. Uh, we lived kind of in the country, but if I snuck downstairs and went out at night, or if I just went out and played with my friends in the neighborhood after dark, it wasn't a big deal. And I feel like that's probably changed a lot. Um, I, I don't know if it's changed everywhere or if it's just changed for me, but it's harder for me to imagine parents letting their kids wander off now than it was back then. Yeah, the same thing for me, and I live in Florida. You could have been eaten by gators. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or that swamp Bigfoot that lives down in the Gulf of Mexico. The skunk ape? The skunk ape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Especially today, I would never let a kid out in the woods in Florida. They could be eaten by gators and skunk apes. With that said... Um, what were we talking about again? <laughs> reboot of Are You Afraid of the Dark? What would you like to see in it? <laughs> The point you brought up about the Midnight Society is interesting because anytime you see, like when you were referring to how much screen time they get and how we don't really get to know them, anytime in the show when we're reviewing it, when we get to see a small glimpse of their life outside the, the Midnight Society, that's always a big treat. And oh, yeah. I wonder if because they deliberately don't show you that stuff very often, I, I wonder how effective it would be if we did see more of them to the point where we could like... Do you, I don't know. Do you think that... Um, I lost my train of thought there, but... Do you think that the Midnight Society would have been less interesting if we always saw more of them? If the show was an hour long and we got at least 15 minutes of Midnight Society per episode, would we be talking about them as fondly as we are right now? Um, I think in my personal opinion, I think that the Midnight Society were pretty much a mixed bag. There were some members that were clearly more interesting than others. I mean, we still remember Gary and, you know, Tucker was little brother and he was, you know, for a lot of people, a pretty annoying one. But, you know, later on, he was going to be more prevalent in the series. Kiki was the tomboy. Frank was the troubled kid. And... You know, Mary Ellen was the one who came up with the really interesting stories. And, um, for and the of most course, part, Eric, the best character. <laughs> Eric the asshole. <laughs> yeah. Who only, and, who only appeared in season one. Yeah, pretty much. But all the other ones, they just seem to be pretty forgettable. Like, you know, um, I wasn't really too crazy about David, and I wasn't too crazy about Kristen either, even though that they did show up occasionally, and, and you know, depending on which episode. But... I mean, I felt that there were there should have been a little bit more development. And when you guys get into the revival era, this is where I felt that, oh man, they dropped the ball on the Midnight Society because they're even more blander than the original series. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Tucker came back as the leader. Spoilers. And then you have a rich girl who's, you know, today a lot of people may know her as Kim from 24. You have the dumb farm boy. You have the tough kid. And you have the sassy girl, and that was it. There were just only five members of the New Midnight Society. With the original, you had like at least maybe eight to maybe even ten. They paint with such sort of like broad strokes in the later ones. The, the early members of the Midnight Society, I think, had some complexity to them. Characters would surprise you more so than the later ones. And, and you, you know, the way that you classified the later characters, I think they were sort of one notes. Maybe in the way that... You, you see more in like a, a Keenan and Kel type character where they're more of a, a trope. Um, the, the original Midnight Society a little bit more felt like actual people, you know, and like when the romance happened between David and Kristen, even though David and Kristen are bland characters, that's something that I have never forgotten um, was the fact that, wow, in, in the Midnight Society, which only take up like five minutes of each episode, they managed to fit this, this romantic subplot in. Um, I don't, know, I don't know. Maybe I'm biased because I'm old, but I do feel that there was a little bit more characterization in the older ones, for sure. I sure, there was a little bit. I, I think so, too, but I felt like there should have been more. I felt like it could have been a little bit more stronger, and I hope that maybe if they ever do reboot the series, maybe we could have gotten a little bit more interesting dilemmas with the Midnight Society members, but, you know, that's just my personal opinion, and I'm, ver I'm, like, I'm probably, like, one of the very few people even consider that, because everybody just cares about the stories. That's what they want to see with the Min with, with Ari to the dark they just want to see what the stories are so yeah i mean other than the um the suggestions that i pointed out i mean the midnight society they were just there to say the stories and that was pretty much it but yes the earlier seasons of the midnight society you do remember the characters because they did have some 
personality quirks that you remember, even though that they were only shown for like a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's something we talked with DJ about. That's that's something really interesting we've discovered watching the show is that even though you don't really think of them as being integral to the the experience of watching the show, the Midnight Society really is. And um, we actually just interviewed uh, Jose Prindez, who wrote the book on Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah. Episode should be out this week. Check it out. And uh, he talked about how when he was a young kid and he was you know this burgeoning you know creative middle schooler, he really latched on to the idea of the Midnight Society as this group of kids that come and share stories. Even though I think maybe I didn't give it a lot of thought to the Midnight Society when we started these reviews, I've learned that, yeah, they are a crucial part of, like, the success and the, the structure of the show. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even though, the, you know, they don't get as much development as, a, say, you know, other characters in other shows, but they are pretty important nonetheless. You know what I would like oh. to see in a reboot of the show, since we're talking about the original Midnight Society and character development? If they, yeah. If they reboot the show... I'd like to see it open with a brand new Midnight Society sitting around the fire, getting ready to tell a story, and a, an adult man in sunglasses and a Hawaiian shirt walks up carrying a suitcase, and he sets it down and takes off the glasses, and it's Eric from the first from season. season one. <laughs> and he says, what did I miss? <laughs> I'm back, guys. Let's get back to st- telling stories. Gary, Kiki, guys. And all the kids look at him confused. No idea who this adult man who's been missing for 24 years, who he is. We like Eric a lot. I think maybe we're in the minority there, but we we really latched onto him during our review of the first season. Yeah. R.I.P. Eric. Hashtag justice Anyway, so, I, yeah, that's, it's... Um, that, that should be pretty interesting. Kind of creepy, but pretty interesting. <laughs> anyway, so um, wrapping things up, uh, what were your favorite episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark so far? So far, I think the we have a clear top three or four. Yeah. Uh, the Tale of the Dark Music was probably our favorite, like this, the most fun episode from season one. Uh, yeah. It is an insane sort of uncharacteristically dark episode of the show. I think it's the first episode we compared directly to the works of Stephen King. Yeah, there's a very very obvious Stephen King influence at work in that episode. Uh, And it features a really good balance of, like, the kitschy 90s stuff, the humor, and some really out there scary... Sweet guitar licks. (laughs) Sweet guitar licks, and some very scary visuals. Yeah. Uh, So, dark music... I think it's safe to say we both really liked the tale of the lonely ghost from season one. Yeah. Which is I, sort of a super a more iconic. somber. Yeah. Super iconic, more of a, a quieter or somber episode. Still a lot of nineties cheese, but uh, really well put together. And the episode uh, that started our running joke of assuming that every ghost, when their unfinished business finally is finished, they go to hell. Yes. Uh, tale of the midnight madness from season two is really great. Tell them uh, that this is practically art. One of the best visual effects in the show so far. With special effects by the special effects supervisor from Game of Thrones. So those three. Uh, Tale of the Full Moon, which was a ridiculous episode that's not at all scary, uh, but totally exceeded our expectations. And uh, Eli, is there anything from season two or three that I'm forgetting? Anything that, stuck, that sticks out to you? Uh, we We really enjoyed the Tale of the Hatching quite a lot. Yeah, and the most recent episode that I think we really liked, or were surprised by at least, was the tale of Watcher's Woods. Which is just uh, sort of batshit crazy. Which is just bonkers crazy and has some surprisingly gory visuals in it. As a fellow fan of the show, we have to know, what what is your favorite episode of, of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Aside yeah. from the Silver Sight. Ooh, that's a great question, because um, it's been a while since I did my top ten Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes, and I may have to rewatch the series again. But... The episodes that I did watch so far that really impacted me uh, are the ones that you said, like, the, the Tale of the Dark music was a really, really great episode. I remember it just being so creepy, you know, with him just leading his bully over to the basement, and then he's just been taken away, and then it replaces it with a with a bicycle, and it was just like, whoa, that was kind of creepy. Yeah, absolutely insane murder happening in that episode. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Um, I think another episode that I really did like, um, I don't know if you guys, um, well, I, I don't know what guy, what episode you guys are at right now, currently. Uh, we're just in season three right now. We're about 30 solid episodes in. About halfway. Okay. Yeah. 
Or a third of the way, I guess. Yeah. Um, so thinking of that, um, let's see. I think, uh, yeah, Midnight Madness was also another great episode that I do remember because um, yeah, that's one of Kevin's favorite episodes as well because he said that that's where he first got introduced to Nosferatu. Yeah. And, yeah, um, that was, it was a really interesting episode. Just the fact that, you know, you have a bunch of kids just airing a uh, movie over and over again from Dr. Vink and basically the monster just comes to life it's like what would happen if something like that were to happen today you know just bring in a whole bunch of you know viewers to this abandoned movie theater and they're watching i don't know let, let's just say uh um let's see give an example like what what horror movies currently out right now that's the, the only horror movie out right now is ouija origin of evil Oh, okay. <laughs> I know, because I tried to go see any other horror movie, and that's the... Actually, the director, Mike Flanagan, that I said I wanted to see direct an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, is the director of Ouija, Origin of Evil, because it's the only horror movie in theaters right now. Okay. <laughs> Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> enjoy enjoy your fucking Ouija. <laughs> enjoy being haunted by a piece of cardboard. Have fun with your scary-ass planchette. Anyway, I call so this tale never mind the tale of saying. Ouija Origins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. You, you are pretty well versed in the, in the Nickelodeon universe. And so because we are coming up on our, uh, our second summer break, what's the scariest episode of another Nickelodeon show that is not Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because my goal is to make us watch scary, quote-unquote, episodes of any other show what what regret we watched the episode of Rugrats where Angelica has a nightmare that her new baby brother eats her. Oh yeah yeah yeah. So scariest and non are you afraid of the dark show? Probably um well I mean I wouldn't say scary but just kind of creepy like it just kind of gives you chills down your spine. Um I think maybe um, let's think. Um, I think the Invader Zim Halloween episode is really creepy. I, mean, I didn't uh, think about Invader Zim. Invader Zim is a legitimately good answer. I, I would have. I totally forgot about the fact that Zim is in the Nickelodeon pantheon. A lot of people do. They think it's MTV. Yeah, yeah. Or, or it was. It was. I guess that came out around the time Cartoon Network was really sort of killing it with, uh, with like their afternoon lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I think Avatar The Last Airbender has a really creepy episode with, um, uh, Katara meeting up with the old woman. So, yeah, I, want, I think that's a really legitimately creepy episode. That would be um, uncharted territory for me. I'd be interested in seeing that. Really? He never watched Ava Avatar. Avatar You've was never watched was, Avatar. It was Interesting. after my time. I've, I, well, it was I after my it. time too. I mean, I was in college when Avatar: The Last Airbender came out. But I watched it with my little sister a little bit. But because I was in my prime anime phase and everybody was going crazy over it, I decided to watch it. And at first, I thought it was going to be a Shaolin Showdown ripoff, but I got hooked immediately. Everything I saw of it was pretty good. I think I watched with my little sister. I think I watched probably most of the first season, a little bit of the second, maybe. Um, yeah, surprisingly, surprisingly, a really good show. Yeah, you have to watch the entire series in order for you to get a uh, huge appreciation for that episode because it's in the third season. So, yeah, marathon through it and then watch that episode and it'll creep you out. <laughs> I will. I'm going to keep that one on the list then. All right, then. Um, let me think of another one. Um, um, the Salute Your Shorts episode with Zeke the Plumber. Yes. 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 <laughs> We will get to that episode probably in the near future, so that stay to, tuned. That has to be, of the like original Nickelodeon lineup, that has to be the scariest non-Are You Afraid of the Dark episode of any of their shows. I mean, whenever people talk about Salute Your Shores, they either talk about the theme song or they talk about Zeke the Plumber. Yeah. It's the always... one memorable episode that the <laughs> show managed to pull off. It's always crazy to have like a non-horror show decide, yeah, we're going to do a Halloween episode, or yeah, we're going to do a scary episode. Uh, I always loved it when shows would do stuff like that. And, yeah, props to Salute Your Shorts for killing it on that one. Hmm. 
Let me think of anything else. Um, let's see. Scary moments. I mean, I don't think I can think of any more on the top of my head, but those are the ones that I have in mind. It was definitely a struggle for us. That gives us a good jumping off point, though. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot to work with now. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to help in a little bit. Yeah, thank you. All right, so um, I guess we can start wrapping things up. So after you're finished with Are You Afraid of the Dark, what's the next show that you're going to be watching uh, in full? Ooh, that's we still have a long way to go with Are You Afraid of the Dark. Yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I'll be I will be very happy if our show makes it to the end of Are You Afraid of the Dark, and uh, and if it does, you know we've I've I've told myself there's always goosebumps, but uh, I just don't know. We'll have to see where the where the road takes us. I would love it if uh, we watched a little bit of uh, Tal- uh, Tales from the Crypt, and it might be timely since the new show is coming out. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. So uh, one final question: um, What do you think the legacy of Are You Afraid of the Dark is almost twenty five years later? I think it's the best remembered of the horror anthology shows you mentioned. I think when you say horror anthology to someone of a certain age, who was maybe too young for Tales from the Crypt, or like maybe didn't watch a lot of the twilight zone or something i think are you afraid of the dark kind of defines that for me it was the one constant scary show that i watched so if i think of scare anything scary from childhood from childhood tv especially it's are you afraid of the dark yeah i think are you afraid of the dark is a show and i think part of this is because it's kind of hard to find now there's uh, a mystique to it in our sort of nostalgic culture when people think about goosebumps and they look back on goosebumps like you said it, goosebumps got corny the end of every Goosebumps book was sort of a cheesy joke. And with Are You Afraid of the Dark, everyone remembers the early episodes. I think most people that I talk to talk about the earlier episodes. And since it's hard to find, and since those episodes were better and scarier, uh, and we were all probably younger, I think that it, it has a mystique to it as, as yeah, the most endearing of the uh, sort of 90s horror kitsch that happened. And I'm right, very well, glad of it. Very appreciative of, of the show. Yes. Great answers. All right, well, I think that should be it for this episode. So, guys, why don't you please plug and promote your stuff? Uh, if you want to check our show, to soundcloud.com. You can find all of our episodes available oh, for uh, streaming or download. I guess uh, your, your audio sounds like garbage again. Is that on? Is that just on my end, or, is, or does he actually sound like hot garbage? Hello? Mic check? Okay, hey, went out. Hang on. What Dykus is trying to say is you can oh, find us on soundcloud.com. Yeah slash you scared of this on twitter at you scared of this shit because our title used to have a swear word in it and facebook.com slash you scared of this uh we post new episodes usually weekly we have a new episode coming out uh, where we talk to jose prendes author of the are you afraid of the dark campfire companion book which i highly recommend uh yeah so everybody check us out and thank you so much for having us Awesome. Well, thank you for being here on the on the show. I really do appreciate it. So let us know in the comments below on your favorite Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes. Let us know about your earliest memories of the program. And also let us know about your favorite episodes so far on Are You Scared of This? And if you haven't listened to them yet, then I highly recommend that you do check them out. That way you can listen to their opinions about every single episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark so far. So that's it for this episode. Hope you guys have a happy Halloween. And hope to see you around soon. And thanks for listening.